Okay, I'm gonna do a longer update video today because it's my last day. I'm heading out for the summer. A uh, buddy over here caught a fledgling dove. I did a little extra video, but that was the event, and that's all that's left. And that's his second baby dove that he's eaten. He got one yesterday as well. So, um, I caught some frogs in the pond this morning. I thought this was really cool. If you look on top of that little floating plastic thing, you see the lines? They're all uh, toad eggs. There was a couple toads having fun. There's some more over there. So, the pond's about to be full of tadpoles. And the buddy's so funny when they, uh, they were making a bunch of noise and he was like trying to get at them, but they're in the water. He was all scared. All right, so I've um, been eating some blueberries. The birds haven't stolen too many. Let's see, nice, big, and ripe, and look at that. Um, I have changed the worm bin. I won't go deep inside, but you can see all that water is um, AC condensate drip. You can see it dripping. It comes from right there. And so that's what keeps the worms cool. They'll hang out right on the edge of the, the water. And there's plenty of worms down there. Um, they're just buried underneath all those layers. And this is where it comes out. So it's all open system. Um, what you hear is the aerator. So um, this is compost tea. You know, you take a high bacteria compost or compost that's full of life and you pump it full of air. And so I have right here, some molasses and every once in a while I'll put a glug of molasses in and this is what I water the blueberries with um, because they can't handle the city water the high pH water would mess with them so there's just a, a can to bucket it out of here while it's being stored and aerated and brewed but I also just recently put in a passive overflow because there's actually a lot of AC condensate, a lot of water that comes. So you can see the level right there. Um, when it comes up to the top, it goes out and it just drips near the pear tree. Um, it actually, um, I could put in some spaghetti tubes, some, some quarter inch drip line and maybe spread it out, but um, I don't really have time to finish that project. So right now it's just going into the ground and uh, I'll have another a couple holes in a couple places um, but that's that and then I also use the the compost tea and I spray it on the plants so I got my sprayer here so I can fill it up um, but it's been a good system uh, it did have black soldier flies in it last year but this year there's no need because there are no chickens here um, here's a little groomy chama in my face um, all those plants out there are destined for up north. They're heading up to Tennessee and Missouri. And everything else here is not very exciting. Um, I mean, it is, but it's a lot to get into. Um, the tomatoes, we've still had some cool temperatures, so they're setting still, which is really cool because they're big. So as you see, these guys are in the shade. Um, I think this is... That's a homestead, and there's another cluster or two. So that's homestead number 24, um, and then that other one is Brandywine, which is pretty marginal for Houston. I'm finding out. Um, you can see comparatively, the Brandywine is getting more sun because here's our big canopy. It's you know this is really part sun tomatoes, um, and it has not set the fruit um, that the homestead has. But that's about it. There's some papaya coming along and lots of loquat seedlings to try out and then compost we kind of I talked about those it's kind of a mess um, so the vine house um, this was the chicken coop but the chickens moved out to uh, a bigger home and so now it's going to be all covered with vines um, this corner right here the biggest one is chayote squash so it's got a pretty big head start on the others because it started in the greenhouse. Um, there's a little Malabar spinach right there. And then you see that flower? It's a scarlet runner bean, which is uh, one that I'm growing for the first time this year. I don't know much about it. 
Then in this other back corner, this other guy that got a pretty big head start is a birdhouse gourd, and he's actually already got flowers. Uh, I'm not sure they're getting, you know, they're they're ready to be pollinated, but he's going to be pretty big and invasive and covering everything. Um, straight back down there is um, a speckled swan gourd and I think a canary melon in the middle. And then what happened was I just I found a yellow squash from last year, one that had matured, the seeds were all good, and I just found it in the garden, and without thinking, I went and planted a few seeds, and now I'm realizing, I thought I, thought I had planted some cantaloupes, some other melons, other things, it's all yellow squash, see them down there, and so we'll have a lot of yellow squash, this is more lamb's quarter, they just got cut yesterday. Got to share squash and lamb's quarters with Sean, which was kind of cool. Uh, here's more blueberry. And lots more squash. So yeah, I just, I, I didn't learn my lesson and I will never plant more than one plant again, I promise. So yeah, I actually need to harvest. I harvested yesterday and I missed that big one but there's more to harvest today. So, all you gardeners know about yellow squash and, and I still haven't learned. Um, but that's about it. The fig tree has put on a lot of figs and I'm hoping these melon, this is a, a Malali watermelon. It's got some cool seeds like with the, the white edge. And this I was 100% sure was gonna be a cantaloupe because I put seeds right there for cantaloupe. And it's the yellow squash. I don't even know how that happened. Uh, Moringa's coming back. And same with the curry plant. Um, this is not yellow squash, but I think it's just a pumpkin. <laughs> so, not always the best. Um, this compost pile was really cool. I um, brought home a big bucket of chicken poop from the property because they all go in the same spot. And it had this white plastic on top. That's its cover. There was black soldier fly larva. So this compost has a little bit uh, of grass clippings in it. I know it's brown now, but it, it was kind of high nitrogen, but I think they were pretty much eating the poop, um, which is really cool to think about, you know, being able to feed chickens off of their own poop. Um, black soldier fly larva, at least. So I, I scooped them all up, put them in a bin, took them out to the property and made a, you know, a little bucket. So uh, hopefully we'll get black soldier flies out there where they can be used. Um, lots of uh, snap peas, snap peas, snap peas. Um, they're about done though, it's kind of hot. And um, my mom and I harvested, or she harvested, I didn't. I suck at harvesting. Um, but they're just, you know, they're putting in their last ditch effort. So, um, this canopy is new, and it's a real simple design. It's just eye screws and a stretcher bar, and it was a shade cloth that I found on the side of the freeway. I just stopped and grabbed it. It's got some holes and tears. Um, and that's because the aquaponics was getting too hot cooking things. So since it's doubled over, it's probably too much shade. It's probably like 70% shade cloth now. And so we'll play with it. But for now, it'll, it'll definitely be some feedback. Um, these are the basal plants that have been in, I don't know, maybe, a week and a half, two weeks. Um, that just got planted in the back. Um, here you can see more basil. That's um, sorrel, some bean, cucumber. Um, this one should do well. This is uh, Kang Kong, an Ipomoea aquatica. Um, and then just a little bit of cucumber for the summer and basil in the back there. Um, that cilantro is done. So yeah, it was all over overrun with stuff. There's a couple of cucumbers starting, but yeah, it's got to make it through the summer now. Um, I put in a little venturi hole on my inlet hose, so I get even more air now. But that is uh, about it for the aquaponics. And here comes Buddy. Oh, one more thing that's cool about the aquaponics. So. Um, my system was losing water, um, you know, evaporation, all that. I installed a, here, so that's the sun tank. Uh, it's just a short section of dripper hose, and that's hooked up to the irrigation. 
so it's basically like an automatic fill for my mom so she doesn't have to tow the hose over here and I don't have to plumb anything over where you know she can have constant pressure here um, but I think that what's cool is it'll be about the right amount so where when we run the uh, garden irrigation for a couple hours because that's what it needs then it'll be putting in about 30 gallons which is what that needs when it's um, real low, real close to empty, 30 gallons. Um, and there's probably seven emitters, and I can always cut them down if it's you know overflowing, but a little overflow is gonna be okay. But just not letting it go all the way dry. So, we'll see. It's uh, just trying to solve that issue. I see a strawberry. Oh yeah, so this garden. Um, this guy is close enough for me. Um, let's see. Oh, this is really cool. This is a long video. Look at all these shells. So, these were all, I mean, they're ladybug pupa, but they were. These are empty, so they've all pupated. There's a couple coming out. There's another one. Oh, and I didn't even, I didn't plant this corn, I promise. I don't remember planting corn. And, um, you know, there's not enough plants to get good pollination, but here's an air starting and it definitely has enough sun that's like let's see it's almost 10 feet tall right now um there's another ladybug running away and that's some spinach there's a lot of ladybugs so again lots of lots of dill seed coming out of here lots of ladybugs that's a ladybug larva for those who don't know them and look at all these these are larvae that haven't oh, i don't know didn't focus, sorry. Larva ready to pupate and adult ladybugs and and look there's even aphids for them to all eat so they're having fun. Look at all those. So bring in your beneficials with APACA. That's the uh, carrot dill family. Um, here's some big tomato. I think this one's early girl. Uh, she's got some tomatoes down there. They're pretty big. Maybe the squirrels. That's the second set. Maybe the squirrels will grab them. Maybe they won't. This is another nice tomato. Um, oh, and I told my mom she could harvest these beets. I don't. I don't pull things. That's a pretty big beet. But that's only because it's been there a while. There's tomatoes in there. And I don't know that cultivar. Um, one thing I'm excited about is, are these guys. This is amaranth that I haven't grown. Um, before like a seed amaranth not like a pigweed for leaves and so these will probably be 10 feet tall when I come back at the end of the summer those little seedlings um, so look at this yucca I think it's really cool I got it out of the trash pile all those were in one pot and um, yeah it's very orange I haven't seen it that color and the ants are going to town on the nectar I guess it's hard to focus um, let's see, let's see. So I put some irrigation in these pots. This is a, a citrus tree that came out at the pop property. Um, this is wild Texas cherry. So it's setting fruit already, but the coolest thing about this cherry tomato is it will set fruit all summer without stopping. Not like, doesn't even care at all about the temperature. Um, this is my mosquito larva breeding experiment. Um, it's where you breed thousands of mosquito larvae just for fun and I'm just kidding it's uh, for this lotus to see if I could grow it from the grocery store and I put three in and one made a little it's weak still but um, I'm hoping it'll uh, take off and be big by the end of the summer because that'll be a cool plant to have just for fun and I'll do something to handle the mosquito larva I just haven't decided yet well that is about it. What do you think, Vaughn? We talked enough. Hope you guys enjoyed the update. I am out for the summer.